Hello, I'm Ross in Dorset. I can't remember. We started. I, I haven't written that bit down. <laughs> can't I can't remember who you are or where you are. Yeah, let's have a look. How did we start the other one? It was something like... It's amazing. My name's Ross and I'm in Dorchester. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ross in Dorchester. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ross in Dorchester. <laughs> And I'm, I'm I'm in control of the edit, so I'm going to sound great when I do this, yeah, and Dave yeah. is going to sound a right idiot. I'm Dave, and I've got some problems, and I'm aware of. Join David and Ross as they become discombobulated in Dorset, from pixies to poltergeists, witches to woodrows. Hear them explore the legends, folklore, and outright weirdness of their own county. This it's is Dark Doris. A podcast of weird horses. Hello, I'm Ross in Dorchester. And I'm David in Wareham. And this time, we are looking at T. Lawrence, a.k.a. Lawrence Arabia, and his ghostly motorbike and spectral visitations to certain areas in Dark Darset. Yeah, so before we go into more detail on that, maybe we should talk about what local beverage have you got this time, David? I've got another eight arts because I think they're amazing. And this is a beer I've had at festivals. It's a kind of a session beer. It's called Square Logic. It's a pale ale and it's 4.2% and it's nearly all gone. Oh, well done. So what percentage is your one, David? 4.2. 4.2. Uh, Easy. Uh, Breakfast beer. And what do you think? You like it? It's love it. You love it. One of my favourites of theirs. Yeah, totally. Right. So my sister, um, she, I said, to, she said, "What do you want for your, for your birthday?" And I said, "Just get me a bottle of um, local bit uh, booze so that I can drink it on the podcast." And I got a um, a big box delivered today, and I thought it was um, de- um, descaling liquid to um, sort out my <laughs> toilet, so I didn't open it straight away. And uh, when I opened it, I was very shocked to find a, a, a case of. A variety of different um, beers from... Local descaling fluids. <laughs> local beer from... Oh, fuck, where's that from? David, where's that? What brewery is that? That's DBC, Dorset Brewing Company. Yeah, Dorset Brewing... I think they're at Crossways. Yeah, Dorset Brewing Company. So, um, I'm going to be... And there's a whole variety of these. Uh, so, I'm going to expect a couple of Dorset Brewing Company uh, beers on these episodes. Um, when I first opened it, I didn't see the, the note was from my sister and I thought that they'd heard our podcast and sent us a, <laughs> a load of beer. And I was like, wow. Um, but if there are any local oh brewers, he wants to send us. If anyone's drink. heard our podcast, yeah. just say hello. Yeah, send us some drinks and we will definitely talk about them. Um, but I've got enough here now to do uh, like a year's worth of episode to the speed we put yeah. things up. But this is... I think our beer reviews are pretty rubbish. Yeah. Only, you know, slightly worse than our... Uh, ghost reviews ghost reviews but let's see well this is Jurassic Dark so I, that's why I picked this one tonight Ooh. which is very nice it's a wheat beer I think I might be wheat, in, wheat intolerant so this is a little test to see how <laughs> slimy my poos will be after this um, <laughs> but this is 5.9 um, so yeah. we've got style it's a wheat beer C a deep copper smell <laughs> fruitcake Pink. and cloves Taste chocolate port, and it's got two out of five for bitter and three and a half out of five for sweet. And I love it, it's one of my favorite really? I've drunk for mm. a long time. And I've got two bottles, very good. Mm. And you'll never, yeah, you'll be in the toilet after a while, yeah, squirting out the um Dorset dark, um, <laughs> in the literally in the dark because um, the, the lights have all stopped working up upstairs in my house, so we are literally pooing in the dark at the moment. So <laughs> It's quite always quite unnerving. Nice, um, but anyway, enough of my my toilet and um, my bottom. Uh, yeah, back to Lawrence of Arabia. Um, Let, let's there's, get on a, with it. there's an obvious link there, yeah. which we probably <laughs> I, I think we should probably not go too far down the um, yeah Lawrence's bum. So Lawrence Lawrence was one of Dorset's most famous inhabitants um, back in the day, mm-hmm. uh, and there's been several sightings over the years in different locations, mm-hmm. which is why we went out and visited several of those um, over the last couple of weekends. Um, and I'm interested to know, Ross, did you finish watching Lawrence of Arabia? No, I didn't. I, I've tried. <laughs> I think I've seen it before. Uh, I've um, I, I 
I've tried three times now, and I fell asleep the first two times, <laughs> and I managed to get to the um, to the intermission. So, but I've read the Wikipedia article, so I got a good idea what happens next on yeah. it. So you've seen the first two hours. You've just got two more hours yeah. to go. But um, it's one of those films I feel like even I got quite a big TV, but not as big as everyone in the world seems to have at the moment. Every every time I go in a new person's house, they seem to have a bigger television. You know, it, it's it, anyway. Um, I I don't think my television is doing it justice. I feel like if I was in one of these massive screens, which it would have been put on in like the is it a, in the sixties? Yeah. I think it would You'd be um, able to stay awake. Yeah, and I think it would have been a lot more sort of like in awe of these enormous vistas. And I think also you, I got to keep remembering this is all real. None of this is digital. It's one of those things where you feel like mm. they literally had to get all those hundreds of people just on horseback to run across. You know. Just the logistics of making that film would have been incredible, and um, you can yeah. see what, like, how influential you know, pretty much every Star Wars. It's been film. voted one of the best films of all time, hasn't it? Yeah, in, in different lists, it's right up there. Do you do you agree with that? Well, uh, so the fact I haven't watched it all, um, well, uh, <laughs> probably not. Um, I can see how influ- influential it was. Um, yeah, but. I don't know, and I always get teased by um, the guys on my other podcast that often I don't understand what's going on on stuff, but often I'm like, <laughs> I got halfway through and I'm like, I, the whole thing when he he shot someone and then he was like, he, it looked like he was going to leave the army, but then it was, a, it was a case of that he was really upset because he actually enjoyed killing the person and, or, and, mm. and, and then he just really quickly went straight back out again. I'm like, I don't know, I just feel like sometimes older films, I just completely lose understanding of what people's motivation are. And maybe it's just, maybe it's just, it's not, I need stuff for being a, a little bit more obvious because I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I don't understand what, what the reasons why you're doing this. It looked great. It looked, it looked incredible. But, um, but I really enjoyed the beginning. Well, older films, yeah, are a bit more subtle sometimes, aren't they? Mm. So, um, with, the fact in mind that you've only seen half of his life story, mm. um, maybe you could give a quick intro um, on Lawrence's history. Oh shit! Is that what you're going to ask me that? And, and his yeah, yeah, and his Dorset connections. Oh Christ! I wasn't paying attention, <laughs> Dave. Oh, that's dropping in it. Uh, I know he was born in Wales. That's, that was interesting. I found that out that he's actually a Welshman. Um, he was a, a, lit- a illegitimate um, son of a lord who and. Uh, then he uh, he went off to went off to school. I think they named a horse <laughs> after him um, at the school. Um, these are all quite yeah obscure parts of his history. Um, yeah. Then he became an archaeologist, um, uh, and he just I don't know before that he cycled around France and Spain with his um, uh, childhood um, friend, um, and they did. Um, archaeology and uh, drawings and measurements of, of churches and stuff and that got him a job as an archaeologist when he was older he didn't go straight into the war first world war uh, didn't go straight into the war but then ended up um uh, getting posted out um out in the in the middle east and um uh, he was asked to sort of go out and help liaise with um some of the uh the uh the different arab tribes um I'm, I'm feeling anxious already because there's going to be lots of people on here a lot more about this than me. I might accidentally yeah. say something which is not is inappropriate. But so apologies if I'm getting anything wrong or if I'm using the wrong terms for anything. They supported the Arabs to fight the Turks, who were the um, enemy of um, one of the enemies during the First World War. Um, and my understanding was that they did this. Um, Believing that the the British would let them have their own Arab state after after the um, the war, um, when they actually reneged upon that, and um and, and that didn't happen, and I think maybe that was the kind of the beginning of a lot of trouble out in the Middle East. Uh, he wrote a, 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 a an account of of that called the Seven Pillars, Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Is that the name of the yeah. book he read? Yeah, uh, which is Ch- Churchill's favorite book of all time. And then someone wrote an article about him. That's where he got the name Lawrence of Arabia. Um, and apparently they they quite um, over uh, sort of dramatized 
what he actually did, but that got him to be quite famous. And um, he agreed to um, have a photograph dressed in his Arabian outfit, um, which was put in there. And then he became quite a hero and he, he quite regretted um, engaging with this magazine after that point. Uh, and I think he tried to go into uh, back into obscurity. He wanted to. He tried to yeah. join the RAF. He was working for the um, working for the government, I think, at, at one point, and really didn't like it. So, and wasn't enjoying all the uh, the, the fame and the adulation that came his way. So he, he joined the RAF under a false name to try and be a bit more kind of normal again. And um, I think the false name he used was Ross. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It what was. a choice. Yeah. Um, I think he got kicked. They, they they worked out who he was, and so he left and he joined the army again. He did. He joined a tank battalion down at Bovington. Which yes. Is how he comes to um, have these Dorset connections. Um, didn't really like it at all. Thought the army was terrible. Um, and eventually the RAF took him back. Uh, and when he retired, he retired back down to the little house that he'd bought near Bovington um, that he'd been renting for a while. Yeah. So it's interesting. We, we, we went to um, the house, which is called Cloud Hill. This is where. Um, but it turns out that he never actually slept there. He was when he because he was sleeping at the barracks. But this house was kind of like his like bolt hole where he would go and read or um, entertain friends or yeah. uh, etc. Um, then he, I think he uh, off the back of a translation was it the translation of the Odyssey he he did? Yes. Um, the money from that he managed to buy that house and um, in order to retire there and. Uh, we found out while we were saying that he only spent six weeks of his retirement there before he tragically died, which is um, yeah, which is quite sad, really. Yeah. So let let's let's talk about the accident then. So the accident um, happened on his way back from uh, Wool via Bobbington Barracks, mm-hmm. Ooh, and the road is only a kind of mile long to Clouds Hill. Um, and he had an accident. He. Uh, came down into a dip where he saw two children on their bikes. He hadn't seen them before. Because of the dip, he swerved, uh, accidentally maybe clipped one, but ended up in the hedge. Mm. Um, and he was removed from the hedge, taken to hospital, and he died five or six days later. Uh, but there is a conspiracy theory about that, isn't there, Ross, yes. which um, I know interests you quite a lot. Yes. So um, apparently uh, one of the boys, I think, said they saw a black car. Um, and uh, someone uh, examining the bike after, afterwards saw there was black paint on on the on the mo- motorcycle. So they believe that he hit the may have hit the um the car or the car hit him. Um, uh, but the fact that the car didn't stop, there's been a lot of sort of conspiracy theories about maybe he was there was a, an assassination attempt towards uh, for him. Um, I was hoping to get uh, the article of the 14 times which had a lot more information about the, the conspiracies, but um, unfortunately the back issue I ordered, I got the wrong issue and I got uh, one which is an article about haunted teddy bears. So it didn't, <laughs> didn't gain me too much information. There's other stories that um, he what, he didn't actually um, uh, die and it was a, they faked his death. Um, and there's talk about, uh, wasn't it that, some of those boys were interviewed quite um, intensely until they changed their story to say that, yeah. they, that he died. Um, and there's there's a couple of theories on that. One, it, it was the fact he just wanted to go into obscurity. He wanted to, you know, go off and not be Lawrence of Arabia anymore. He just wanted to be, you know, Corporal Ross or Major Ross or whoever it was. Um, and there was some people said that he was spotted at a train station nearby um, after his death. Um, also, Apparently, uh, there's a theory that, um, I can't remember the name of the chap now, but the author of Tarka the Otter, who was a, an acquaintance of um, of uh, Lawrence, wanted him, okay, again, if I get this all wrong, and I'm, 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 I'm about to call someone a Nazi here, and if, I, and if that's, you know, <laughs> I read this somewhere, misremembered it, and I'm putting it out there now. That, uh, th- that this author was a Nazi sympathizer and had um, links to uh, the Nazi party and they were trying to get um, Lawrence to go over to uh, Germany to meet um, Hitler and help them out with the war in the desert, and I, in, I believe, in Africa. So these, there's lots of these sort of conspiracy theories around, which always happens when someone famous dies tragically yeah. and people just can't deal yeah. with the fact of like the, how the easy people die. Can you wait yeah. there one second? We'll need to get something. 
Yeah. So uh, for listeners at home, Ross has just left the Zoom call. Um, I think that beer's gone right through him, and he, I can hear noises from the toilet. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> we mentioned a couple of Dorset place names there, and I've got to get my Dorset place names book out. To, um, oh, excellent. Yeah, so we always gain lots of amazing insight yeah. from here. So, so we've got Bovington. So we talked about Bovington. Bovington is um, near here, which is uh, it's famous for the, the Tankor uh, base there. There's a brilliant um, tank museum. Well, when I say brilliant, a very big tank museum there. Um, David and I were saying that every time we visit there, you get overexcited by the, the sheer amount of tanks and then soon get very bored of looking, <laughs> at, looking at the, the sheer, sheer amount, amount of tanks. tanks. Yeah. Um, but, but it's also near Monkey World, isn't it? Yes. Wow. And there's an amazing so. road sign, isn't there, where they just it says um, Monkey World Tank Museum. It's, if it runs, there's, if it all runs into one, and there's a little icon of a monkey and a tank, and just love the idea of it being a Monkey World tank. And there's also uh, there's also a shooting club nearby and a gliding club. And do you remember mm. the year before last, we camped to the campsite and had gliders taking off in the field next door, swooping really low over our heads yeah. while we could hear howler monkeys and the sound of machine guns <laughs> coming from the other side of the field. It did sound like the, the plant of the eggs had uh, kicked off. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to Dorset. <laughs> All right, so Bovington in Wool. Um, first uh, first recorded, um, first written record of Bovington was in the Doomsday Book of 1086. Um, and it's... They think it means a farm named after a man called Boffer. Um, so yeah, so there was a guy called Boffer who had a had a um, farm there. Boff- farm. Boffington. E-I-A-A. Boffington. E-I-A-A. Yeah. Also, Morton. Have we talked? Have we mentioned Morton yet? No. Okay. We we'll come to come. To, so Morton will come up later on. Yes, Morton, 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 Morton. So Morton again was mentioned in the Doomsday Book, um, which means marshland farm. From the old English of moor and tun. And there, yeah, that makes sense because there's lots of uh, the river frame flows through there and it goes into lots of different flood channels. So it is very um, wet. It's very wet, yeah. Floodplains. Is that where the, um, yeah. that's where they got that big uh, forge you can go to where you walk through yep. the kids and stuff? Yeah, the kids. That's right. That's a nice little place there. And where, where, uh, where, um, where you come from, David, or where you, you are, from you don't come from Wareham. Luckily enough to be allowed to live here. Yeah. Well, at what point were you people with webbed fingers? At what point will they allow you to be called Wareham-ish? I don't think they ever will. Mm-hmm. They hold a grudge more than Cornish people, more than seven generations. Uh, I think this may be the time to tell the story of what happened when the Olympic flame came through Wareham. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a a, um, a band of merry men that meet in our local pub and uh, sadly I'm not allowed to join because you have to be 60. I'm not far off from getting there. Um, and they meet once a month and do uh, do their thing. They drink beer and read poetry and eat roadkill. Uh, and when the Olympic flame was brought through for the Olympic Games in 2012, they all stood outside and blew as hard as they could uh, <laughs> because our village pub is one of the only buildings in, in town that's still got a thatched roof. Because in 17-something, there was the Great Fire of Wareham. Uh, it, it burnt down two-thirds of the town, and the king decreed that any new buildings in Wareham would not be allowed a thatch roof. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, the Piss Society, as they're called, which stands for the Purbeck Independent Simpleton Society, all stood outside the pub, blew as hard as they could, and were proclaimed heroes in the local newspaper for, <laughs> for preventing the second Great Fire of Wareham. <laughs> There was a great fire of Dorchester as well, apparently. Um, my, my, one of my daughters has been talking about that. That's brilliant. One day, maybe you'll be allowed to join. Pissed. One day. Um, Wareham. Ninth century, Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. It's the first time that that was um, recorded, which is incredible. I just, And we can talk about, more about incredibly old stuff from Wareham later on. Um, so, Wareham means homestead by the weir. And the old English mm. of wer or war and ham. So there's no doubt a weir and a fishery there on the river frame from a very early date. There we go. Yeah, that's cool. There is indeed a weir. Um, so 
maybe let's talk about the locations that mm. we um, have visited. So, first of all, we went to Wareham, mm-hmm. um, and there is talk. So, Lawrence once stayed or used to stay occasionally before he rented Clouds Hill at um, uh, a hotel in town called the Anglebury House Hotel that's still there. Um, and some people allegedly have seen a ghost of a man in Arabic dress down by the river at the key end of town, Mm -hmm. which I think is utter toss. Yes. Because that's the busiest part of town. It's way away from the hotel. Yeah. Um, And we, yeah, the whole Arab Arab dress thing is is harking back to that photo that he became famous for. Yes. So this is another thing we was talking about, because there's another sighting um, we will talk about in a bit, again, wearing his Arabic dress, which he probably never wore in Dorset. I can, I'm pretty sure, unless, you know, when he had people back to his um, his house and, they, and he, said he wanted to sort of like dress up for them or something, but... Well, put his dressing gown on. on yeah, the bar. it's just, why are ghosts always <laughs> a, a, appearing in the clothing... Of the of of what they would look like in, in their most famous photograph or most yeah. famous painting, you know. Unless, yeah, so I just had a theory. Maybe why it might be the case. Well, maybe unless maybe so they recognise. Yeah, maybe if they <laughs> make, remember me. Yeah, or <laughs> they they maybe it's a case of there's when we see a ghost, we're not seeing a thing, we're not seeing a physical. Um, uh, you know, entity there. Maybe it's just like, but the, you know, if if something which I don't believe, if something does have a spirit, if there's an essence of that yes. of that being there, that that the only way we can perceive that through whatever weird psychic um, percep- perception we've got is for for our brain to try and make sense of this spirit. So do you know when we see? Faces of it was it? You might see a face in a plug hole or in a tree yeah. or in a cloud. Your brain is like going, right. This looks like this is something I recognise, and therefore my the brain fills in the gaps. So maybe, you know, if I was going to be generous and um, try and make up a theory about this is supernatural, it might be a case of that there is the essence of of um, of Lawrence there. There's nothing for me to actually see, but the only way my brain will make sense of that is to say, okay, what what does Lawrence mean to me? Goes goes into my little mind palace, picks up a picture of Lawrence of um, Peter O'Toole, and and I see Peter O'Toole because that's the only way my brain can make sense of of mm. the spirit there. Yeah, that's me being very um. Okay, well, the generous. other location we visited in Wareham is the very old um, St Martin's in the Wall Church. Mm. Um, on the the north end of town, um, and that is a that is a, a very I think it's one of Dorset's oldest churches, mm. um, incredibly old. And in that church lies the effigy, the marble sculpted um, coffin top of of Florence of Arabia that was done by his sculptor friend after he died. And that is also sculpted. That's meant to be very lifelike, mm-hmm. isn't it? Very kind of it's got the same height. Um, and a, and a recognisable likeness of, of Lawrence, and that's done in the Arab dress as well. Yes. So yeah, if pe- that's what people think he looks like, that's what people are going to see. Um, but it was it was so just going past that church. Often I've always looked at that as I if I've ever driven to your house, I thought it'd be really great to go inside there. So again, thank you to this podcast for <laughs> giving me a reason to go in there. Um, we was, wasn't sure if we'd be allowed to go in, but the door was just open. We we believe. Because it was on the week, it was in the period of mourning for the Queen. Maybe it was to allow people to go in there um, for that. But yeah, just such an incredible space. You say over a thousand years old. I think the building. Yeah, is. totally. Yeah, and Anglo-Saxon. And we we um we took a video camera. So if you look at our uh, episode um, YouTube uh, YouTube episode, I was going to say then that was like someone's <laughs> granddad trying to explain what the internet was. Uh. Yes, go on to the interwebs and yeah. look at the YouTube. Yeah, um, yeah, we got some. Um, we was, were very lucky that there was no one in there to stop us filming. So you know, we got yeah. some good. You know, David sitting up 
across Lawrence and Arabia, riding him like a camel. No, <laughs> never happened. Never happened on camera. The, We've got to review the footage, Sif, as any ghosts in the background. Yes, we have. Um, but the it's got frescoes on the wall, um, but it's like several layers, you know, where hmm. someone is um, uh, painted directly onto the plaster, plastered over it, done another painting, and it's all come away. Yeah. You know, it, it's in a sorry, a little bit of a sorry state, but it's it's great because you can see the, through the different booth almost through the yeah. layers of time. So before before Lawrence um, moved to the area, it was an even sorry state, and mm. it didn't have much roof on, and it had ivy growing through the roof. Um, and I th- he was one of the instrumental kind of people, and a and a big uh, financial help to getting that church up and running. Mm. So I think that's that's pos- possibly why that effigy's there. Yeah. Um, but it, was, think, it was offered to other cathedrals, wasn't it, who yeah. who, who all found the, the idea of Lawrence of Arabia a little bit too unsafe politically to mm. to keep in their, in their um, churches. Yeah, so randomly, it's within 10 minutes walk of David's house. And yeah, it was very interesting to see, so uh, that was great. Cool. Uh, and then location two that we went to, um, we thought we'd have a look at the accident site itself. Um, like the couple of ghouls of, that we are. <laughs> yeah, kind of good. <laughs> Kind of road accident investigators. Yeah. Um, so the road from Bovey down to Cloud Hill has changed over the years. And it's no longer the narrow, uh, hilly little road it was. It's been flattened slightly and widened. Um, it's quite a quite a busy road. Um, mm-hmm. It's the main road into to Bovington from that direction. Um, but halfway along, there is a a car park where you can pull over, and there's a tank viewing area. So there's uh, the tank training area it looks out on too mm. with some with some ramps and dirt tracks. Although the, although the two men who were in the car when we got there <laughs> both had their seats reclined and they didn't seem to be viewing any tanks. Um, they just <laughs> looked very uh, sheepish as we uh, pulled in next yeah, to them. Yeah. Um, I don't think we were their type. No. So if you if you, if you leave the uh, the car park, there's actually a memorial in the car park, isn't there? Yeah. But that's not the official one. Well, I don't, so yeah, it's very yeah, it's very strange that we found yeah. we found the first one. Lawrence died near here. Then, Near here, yeah. and then two, three hundred yards through the woods, there's a there's um, a far nicer memorial, a, a, a bit more impressive, um, and that's put there by the Lawrence Foundation or the Lawrence, Lawrence Society. Society. Yeah, the Lawrence well, I Trust. really hope I'm what listen to this because it probably got this all completely wrong, and David didn't climb on any statues. Up <laughs> so we, yeah, um, we looked at that. There was, there was a, quite a lot of kind of concrete in the in the banks by the road as mm. well that didn't look natural. No. Um, and then we kept walking up the path, oh. and it brings you to the back of Clouds Hill yes. itself. Um, so we were peering over into the garden. Um, Clouds Hill became location number three that we went to, but from this angle we could see into the garden. And interestingly, it's in that garden where the most recent sighting of Lawrence, um, Lawrence's ghost, uh, was seen, which mm. was in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, by someone who was visiting Clouds Hill uh, house itself, mm-hmm. uh, which we did mm-hmm. um, the, the next time we went out. Uh, it's a National Trust property, so you have to book tickets to go in. Mm-hmm. It's very, um, it's very basic, isn't it? Yeah, it's it, it's, it's, it's probably really the small, small, smallest, really dark. smallest National Trust house yeah. I've ever been to. Yeah. It's um, very interesting um, that this is something which they've decided to do. Was it? But mm. I'm, I'm glad they did. It was. It was. It was a good. Totally. Thing. Yeah. The 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 room downstairs is small. Um, it's got bookcases on three wall. Now on two walls, the only window in one wall, and then a fireplace. There's a there's a kind of bed, um, to kind of platform where Lawrence used to recline and read books, and a little chair that he built. So it's almost like an iPod iPad stand, so he mm. could have books upright and read. Very small chair because he was a tiny little chap. No, yeah, five uh, foot but, five. No electricity, yeah. so he's got little candle stands, and it's arranged so he can no water. Put his little feet up yeah. by the fire. And I think that's that's part of. I think that's why people see the ghost because it's such a charming little place, so evocative. Mm. Um, when, when we went there, they had the fire does going take you straight back. Yeah, they'd had the fire going, hadn't they? So you can yeah. smell. You had that smell, and you can imagine him sitting in there making his toast oh. on his little toast little device he'd, he'd built and yeah it was kind of it felt quite lonely i don't know sometimes you feel like it felt like a bit of an ideal idyllic sort of like yeah, yeah. um existence but also but that's very why lonely. he likes it yeah because he would go there to to be alone and to write and to read and to escape 
the public. Mm. Um, and the first, so the first ghost sightings were in um, the 30s. So he died in 35, 36. Mm. And I think 37 is the first time his ghost was seen actually entering into the cottage. Okay. And again, in Arab dress. And this, this kind of um, happened a few times. And the last sighting for a while was in 1973 until 2016 mm. when a foreign tourist with a group of friends was, they'd visited the house like we did, walked around and then came out into the gardens. And she was um, halfway up the hill. It's a very steep hill, mm. right out the back um, of, of the cottage. And she saw uh, a figure in a dark kind of uh, flowing dress looking back at her. She had the face um, that had a, had a hood over the face, couldn't see the eyes, but she had the feeling someone was staring at her. Mm. Uh, and this figure was staring at her. So she kind of, she stared back. Then a friend called her. She looked away to see her friend, turned back round again, and, and this figure had gone. And mm. she had no idea who Lawrence was, She, um, which actually I find quite weird, because if she'd been in the house already, it was I think full she's, of pictures I think of Lawrence. She, I think when I read it, she said she didn't want to go in. She waited outside, while, uh, so while, she waited outside. while her, um, you know, her friends or yeah. her family went in. And it, apparently it wasn't until the next day when they went to uh, Lawrence's graveyard. Um, that she realised who it was, mm. but there are no photos of him at, at the grave, grave no. and there are no. So maybe they meant no effigies of him at the grave. Yeah, maybe they meant the church. That would have been sense if they if they went to the. Yeah, but I think they did say they're at Mortimer. Yeah. Um, so we also visited the grave. So that was our our location number four, and that's out at Morton, um, opposite Morton Church, just across the road. There's a, a small graveyard, and Lawrence's gravestone is right at the very end. Yeah, and um, I think it's I'm, quite a busy graveyard, isn't it? Yeah. There there's always right every there. time we've been, we've been there a couple of times now. Every time we go there, there's people going to look at the grave. Mm. And there was, there was flowers on the grave this this time. There were um, little um, little. I don't know what you would call them, like little gifts or little things on yeah. on the the stones. We went the m- memorial stones, so he's still, you know, people. He's still remembered. People still are mm. interested, and uh, and there's a, a still a, a, a draw to these places, but which is really interesting for someone who who's not been around for a very long time. Yeah, I think someone was sending a, a, a some flowers or roses, weren't they, on on his on the anniversary of his death or something for 90 odd years. Yeah. Anyway, so there's, there's, you've all, we've also all already mentioned the fact that the ghosts are always seen wearing an Arab dress and probably Lawrence would wear motorbike leathers or his uniform or, you know, nothing like that in Dorset. So the other, the other thing I have a problem with is the locations. Yeah. One more thing. It's, it's the locations he's seen. Um, so he had an accident out on the road halfway between his house and, and where he was working or used to work at barracks. Uh, one of two was, spots, which we're not quite sure. Yeah. People can't make he mind up. Taken to hospital um, and died there five days later. Um, so how does his ghost come back to the bridge at Wareham mm. or the garden or Clouds Hill? Yeah. Um, how does that work, Ross? Yeah. I, I don't know. There's no rule book for, for ghosts. Is there? That's the thing. Um, Obviously, one of them's only one of them's real. All the rest are fake, or <laughs> or or if, oh, he's not dead. Or if you if you um subscribe to the stone tape theory of ghosts, where um uh ghosts are actually recordings of of uh, events that happened in a particular place, where maybe a traumatic event or um can be re- recorded by like the surroundings around them often people talk maybe the walls of a building that could be the case you could have lots of different ghosts um, yeah. if it's just okay. recordings of things that happen in certain places um that could be an um in, in an explanation clothes. but yeah again in different clothes yeah. um so the but the most worrying thing for me is the is don't, the be worried, David, don't be worried stories i'm not gonna sleep now i'm gonna be haunted uh so there are stories of um, a ghostly motorbike sound, uh, which is which is brilliant. So um, fairly soon after his death, local farm workers would claim that they heard the realistic sounds of motorbikes coming towards them. Mm-hmm. And it would normally happen um, just before dawn. Um, and then the noise of the motorbike would uh, end abruptly. Mm. Just the time we someone heard. might be going to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. 
we heard a ghostly motorbike noise, didn't we? We captured it on video yeah. for our, our episode on the YouTube. Yeah, and we, did, um, we also saw several ghostly motorbikes passing us on the road with all the other vehicles. <laughs> it's, you know, I don't so know. what you were saying earlier about a ghost being an essence, how can a machine have an essence or have a soul? I don't know. It's... I was, I was going to... If you bear me one second, there's a book downstairs. Which might have, might have Are you going to the toilet again? No, no. One sec. I'm going to have to <laughs> run. All right. One sec. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Let's explain. Also, <laughs> I podcast on the third floor of my house. <laughs> And I've just run downstairs and run all the way back up again and realised that I've actually got two copies of this book and one of them is just like two feet away <laughs> over there. But this is the Osborne World of the Unknown Ghost Books, which is book, it's probably the book that got me interested in all this yes. stuff when I was a kid at school. Proper childhood series, those are. Yes. So um, in here, there's a thing about um, uh, where ghosts where ghosts gather. So they're talking about, um, so it says there are many, so this is, let's just talk about all the different types of ghosts. Um, there are many cases of, of people seeing and hearing the spirits of disastered victims, both before and after the event. The flame and crash of the R101 airship shown above was revealed, was relived by a woman medium who was contacted by the airship's captain. The airship crashed in France two days earlier, and the captain's voice speaking through the medium described the last moments of the flight. Um, and there's also ghost, ghostly battlefields. Um, uh, Sh- Shiloh in Tennessee, USA, is still claimed to be haunted this day. The Battle of Shiloh is a major conflict in the American Civil War. Two days of savage fighting resulted in the deaths of over 24,000 men. The months that followed, stories of phantom battles began to be told. A report claims gunfire and the crashing of sabers and bayonets and stuff. So... This to me is again one of these things. Like there's a haunted submarine in here where someone <laughs> people see the see the, the ghost of a submarine. There's the um, there's haunted ships. Uh, the unluckiest ship afloat. In 1858, the Great Eastern was the largest passenger ship in the world, um, and people keep seeing that. So I think it's just a case of like trauma. It's just like if if something traumatic yeah. happens in the world, either. I would say the reality of it... Do you think it, people just want to see things too much? I think people just can't forget. I, often I think people can't forget um, when something horrible happens. And and it's it's almost like it, it, um, it causes a... It's almost like it causes a scar in... in in yeah. mem- in, in, like, our collective memories. And that's what people are responding to. That's why people... You know, people love an anniversary. People like hmm. we just had the nine eleven. Was it the twenty? How many years was it? Twenty five years? What was you know, I don't know. We just had a, a major nine eleven um, memorial. <laughs> memorial. Memorial. When think something like that, something happens which um, is traumatic for people. It never goes away, and. Maybe just the fact of hearing a motorbike makes people think yeah. of Lawrence. You know, it's not, it's, you know, he's not, it's not a ghost of, of a bike, but it's just the sound of a bike would make, makes people remember. The sound him. of a bike. And I, I, absolutely. And I think when we were there, and we walked up to the top of Clouds Hill. You get a spectacular view from mm. the top there. And you, you realize how kind of flat and large the, the valley is that the through goes yes. through. And I think it could easily be you could be a farm worker or a in the in the Wareham forest, and you can hear these these sounds travelling from from long distances, yeah. and they would get spooky the, the longer they travel. But also, you've got to remember, you know, in the nineteen thirties, that part of Dorset probably pretty not much happens around there. No, if, not many motorbikes. No, or not many world famous war heroes living nearby. Yeah. That is probably the most fa- yeah. the most famous person who's ever lived in <laughs> in Bovington, you know. Um, apart from, I think Prince Harry lived there for a bit, didn't he? But uh, yeah, but I think it's a case of like it's not only 
something which is traumatic to the nation. It's just like someone really fucking famous did that, and they're, yeah. they're never going to forget that he was he was there. Yeah, and I think that's one of the, one of the things that actually caused like his, you know, his sadness and his life. You know that people yeah. would not ever forget what he'd done. Well, there's there's um there's one line I read when researching this that I don't think I'll ever forget, and that's um so the motorcycle could easily have been a living motorbike rider traveling through the countryside but uh, andrew green who wrote ghost of today in 1980 uh, commented that uh assumed by the romantic to be the machine used by lawrence the noise they heard could also have been the ghost of another cyclist who crashed and was killed there some years ago yeah. <laughs> people just but you know it's people want the romantic the exciting and the and the obscure they don't want and because, How many episodes do you think we have to do and investigate pretty sham investigations do we have to do until the spirit world gets together and kind of like, right, we're going to show these two and we do see something that just makes us so shit scared we never talk again. Huh. And I'm not talking about another leaf, another floating another, leaf yeah. captured on video we this did, time. Yeah, I think there is something, try, someone's trying to tell us something. If we do see yeah. more of those, it might start becoming a bit like something is trying to tell <laughs> us something. Um, I don't know. Hopefully something will happen, which will... Um, yeah, and I don't mean one of my friends putting a sheet over their head and popping out from behind a tree next time we're out, which yeah, yeah. one of them's bad to do. Yeah, well, that's why we have to keep what we're doing next a secret. So what do we think? Is that it does T. Lawrence haunt various parts of Dorset? I I can't get behind this. I think, uh, like you say, he was just too famous for people to let go of. He was too famous for people to think had an ordinary death. Mm -hmm. um, I hope his last six weeks that he did retire to his favourite Cloud Hill were happy. Yeah. It's a shame he didn't last a bit longer. I hope he enjoyed listen to music on the enormous gramophone he had in his in his in his upstairs room i've never seen such a big paper mache trumpet it, it was very <laughs> impressive and i was very upset that the man said it doesn't work anymore um i heard it does work we just obviously look like wrong ends that they wouldn't play it for us I, I hope that if there are ghosts it's not just famous people who come back as ghosts i hope that there is a a democracy of anyone can come back from the dead um and I hope that you don't have to wear the clothes people most remember you by. Um, uh, but I think it's it was it was a great opportunity to go and find out a bit more about um, uh, Lawrence. And uh, uh, yeah, it was it was good fun doing it. It was excellent. Until next time. Okay. I can't remember what did we say at the end. I say happy I just day. Say goodbye. No, you don't. <laughs> you say it's not natural. I say it's not natural. Yeah, okay. It's not natural. It's not natural. Happy day. Bye bye. If you know of any weirdness you'd like to share with Dave and Ross, you can tell them by email at darkdarson at gmail dot com, or talk to them on Twitter at darkdarson. Well, until next time. Stay discombobulated. Stay discombobulated. Stay discombobulated. Stay discombobulated. Stay discombobulated. It's not natural. So, Ross, right, if I die first, let's make a pact. Okay. Whoever dies first, the first thing we do is go and say hello to the other one. Okay. So if I die first, I will, within, let's say within a week, mm -hmm. we'll make our presence known. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, just make sure. Because You're going to have to lay, on, some... lay on your back, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, make our presence felt. Yeah. And then, yeah, because it's after a week, you'll know it's just like you trying to read me into things. But mm. I will, yeah, you'll yeah. know it's me somehow. Yeah, okay. Um, but unfortunately, if I die before you, we won't be able to do a podcast about it because I know the, I'm the only one who knows of the passwords for uh, the yeah. account. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'll, uh, 
I can update this, the website. Yeah, don't we, have it uploaded by then. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll, yeah. It's a I don't. I don't care about not making other people aware of it. I just want to know that you're there. Yeah. Still. Yeah. But then w- there's proof, isn't it? And it's, we could. It would be absolute proof if we get this legally written up mm-hmm. as a pact. Yeah. And and then like put GoPros over ourselves for the <laughs> whole week when we're still alive. Yeah. We'll capture the moment where the other one says, "Hi, I'm a ghost. Remember me." Yeah. And we put this to bed once and for all. Do you do you watch the TV series Ghost? I have done. Yeah, I'm a bit. I'm not up to speed. Oh, sadly. it's brilliant, and it's one of our favourite things. We all love it. But yeah. I said to Beck, imagine if it was a case where she could see ghosts and I couldn't. Um, as is the uh, the um, the premise you'd, for the for the thing. Yeah, you'd be gutted. Yeah, and she said I would never leave her alone. Be like, ask them this, and and she also, <laughs> and she also said that. I would drive her insane because I was constantly.